Hello, today we will discuss Grover's algorithm. This algorithm is a quantum algorithm which was devised in 1996 by Love Grover. The algorithm goes like this. Uh, it is mainly searching an unsorted database of n equals 2 to the power n elements in order of square root of n evaluations. Uh, in case of saying this uh, unsorted searching unsorted database, we can rather define it in this way, like find x such that f of x equals 1. For example, suppose we have a database, unsorted one, where the elements are 1, 2, these are the indexes of the elements, this is the w our expected one, the marked one, this n minus one element. So we have zero in all other points and one in this index. We need to find this w for the one element here. So this is our main problem to solve how to find this. And the claim here is we can find this using this Grover's algorithm within square root of n evaluations. So uh, let us see uh, how classical algorithm works. In our classical computer, uh, we can find this value by an average of n by 2 evaluations, which is in the order of n. So we see uh, Grover's algorithm claims a drastic detection in the number of evaluations here. So uh, let's see what an oracle is before we start with the Grover algorithm. So oracle is a black box that we cannot look inside and to which we can pass queries pass queries and watch return answers and get answers these are mainly oracles and black balls these are physical devices uh, in Grover's algorithm we have two oracles mainly used which we will uh, discuss later on so first let's see the circuit of Grover's algorithm The circuit goes like this, here are our qubits, first we pass them into a Hadamard gate for uniform superposition, then we pass them into our first oracle. How and what these oracles does we will discuss later, then again a set of Hadamard gates and now the second oracle. After that, we just measure these things and get our output, the result. This is the main circuit. So what was uh, the claim in Grover's algorithm? The claim was to find W with high probability. Uh, if there are n elements, we will find them within the order of square root of n. Here. Uh, this is the first oracle where we pass the our, all the values before that we get this state the s state which is the superposition of all the states and when it goes into the oracle this is a mainly phase inversion oracle what this does is inverse the phase phase inversion so if there are the it changes only the phase of w if the input is w goes to minus w and if it is anything other than w, it stays the same, x not equals w. Now, after passing from this, here comes this state, this is called the diffuser. Let me mark it green. This is a diffuser. The total system is v, and mainly if there are square root of n evaluations, that happens here. We do this this Hadamard gate and this oracle and this whole system r times r is the number of evaluations we need to do that square root n these are both are the same now let's uh, dive into the protocol and all the steps of the algorithm in the first step what we will do is this is my circuit of the Grover's algorithm now here this is my first step I apply Hadamard gate on all the states and I name this state the s so what actually happens 
is the Hadamard grid creates an uniform superposition among all the states. First of all, so if I apply this, this means all the states to the power n have equal amplitude and it belongs to x and this. I name this the state s. So here, uh, if I draw this for better understanding, in this side I have the amplitude, and here are all the states 0, 1, 2, w, dot n minus 1, all the states, and all have equal probability, which is 1 over root to the power is n. Now let sigma be the space spanned by s and w and we define w perpendicular such that its orthogonal is perpendicular to w and the inner product of these two is zero so w is like the vector it's all other values except one which is w sum x not equals w x this is my w perpendicular so if I try to draw this, what I will get, here is my W and this is S. And since W perpendicular is orthogonal to W, it will go something like this. Now if I write S as a projection, I can write this as n minus 1 W perpendicular plus 1 over root n w this is my s and i can further write it this as cosine of theta by 2 that's how i'm defining this plus sine of theta by 2 where theta is from comes from this and this here and here i get 2 arc sine 1 over square root of 2 to the power n and theta by 2 this is theta by 2 so S is projection onto this one and this one. Now we will see the second step, which is phase inversion. This happens here uh, in this state. After the in uniform superposition state, we apply this oracle, this black box, and this inverts our phase. So how does it work? Actually, what this does is uh, it changes the phase of W only and gives the other states of S where s not equal to w same so uf on w state is equals to minus w but uf on x any other state is equals to x where x not equals w and and to draw the picture all the other states are like this here is amplitude and these are my states this is my W previously, but now it is shifted in this way. This is my new W and this is no one. This change is done. This is my 0, 1 or other states, amplitude. This change is done after UF is applied onto this. UF is defined mainly in this way. UF of S is equals to I minus 2 times projection of W onto S. So let's see the phase diagram of it. In our phase diagram, we had W in this side, W perpendicular in this, and S in this. The angle was theta by 2. So what happens here? We see uh, the projection of S onto W, we take it twice. So the projection of S onto W is this. And this is the first one. If we subtract it again, twice it comes to this and this so the new position is this this is my s you have acting on s and this angle is similar to this one theta by 2 so you see uh, the values of s the projection of components of s along w perpendicular is not changed they remain same but the w states are now negative where they are like in this 
now they are here so phase change occurred only on w states the next step is called step 3 which is inversion about the mean mean so here we see the circuit this is another oracle and why and how these oracles work we have said earlier these are mainly black box and physical devices we insert queries and we get an output now, the details we will discuss later but now let's just concentrate on what are the functions this oracle with these two hadamard gates performs the an inversion operation so it performs an inversion operation this whole thing is we denote this as v and call the diffuser and after that we get the state v uf s v operator your operator onto s but the v is mainly projection of this one ufs onto s it is like this s minus identity matrix so when we apply v on ufs we get this let me show this in figure we are taking a projection of this one onto s twice so the first projection here next again here we get a new state here which is v uf s so now and this angle is theta because these two the sum of these two are theta and the projection onto that side this will also be theta now we see it was previously here theta by 2 phase shifted but now it's theta plus th theta by 2 which means theta plus theta by 2 which is 3 theta by 2 shifted into that so after one operation it is shifted this what we do is in the Grover's algorithm we find an we ran this uf and v this portion r times we said it earlier we run this r times so every time this gets closed by theta into that set it's shifted along w by theta every time so we have decided that we will run this operation on s r times to get a high probability result of our expected w so what is the value of r let's say here if we draw the picture again w here w perpendicular here s was here and after two operations we got it here let me write it blue v uf on s after one one time operating v uf so the angle is now theta by 2 plus theta what we want at the end we want this to be aligned with this one in this side very close to w so we ha have the maximum probability of w so when we will get that we'll get that when this angle is pi by 2 now it's 3 theta by 2 it will be pi by 2 so and what after every iteration the angle increases by theta so after r iterations it will be r theta and the initial theta by 2 we want this to be as close as possible to pi by 2 where we defined earlier theta is 2 arc sine 1 over root to the power 2 to the power n which is our total number of elements so now r equals to pi over 2 theta minus half and we also know theta is equals to this one if this value is very big to n and very big then this theta will be very small and for small theta sine theta is almost equals to theta we are going to use this approximation here so we'll get pi over 2 1 over 2 to the power n minus half which is almost equals to pi over 4 2 m which is in the order of square root m so we will need this much iterations uh, to get our expected w so that's all for now i think this will do for the basics and the further detailed analysis we will see on a later video so thank you